Hi, do you want to know why agriculture farms struggle with water management and permaculture farms don't? Then watch this video, but stick around until the end where we'll look at specific permaculture farm case study. So let's dive in. We are going to look at the common water challenges that conventional farms face and how they handle them. Number one, water scarcity. We know that the importance of water on our planet is undeniable. We know that some places on Earth are really dry and it's obvious that water is super important for farms there. But even in wet areas, people sometimes forget how important the water management is, especially when in the second half of the year, when it's dry, everyone realizes how much they really need that water which just a few months ago was in abundance in the landscape but it's no longer available. On top of that, the unpredictable rain patterns can make it tough to plan and manage water effectively. Number two, groundwater depletion. Conventional farming practices often involve large-scale irrigation systems that consume massive amounts of groundwater. This can lead to underground water sources getting used up. Moreover, taking out too much water can make the land sink, reduce how much water wells can provide, and in serious cases permanently lose access to groundwater, also impacting local communities that rely on these reserves for drinking water. Number 3. High energy consumption Farms use groundwater for irrigation by using electric or diesel pumps. The energy used to pump water for irrigation can be a lot, making it more expensive for farmers and adding to carbon emissions. Number 4. Agricultural runoff So conventional farms also use chemical fertilizers, pesticides and herbicides, which leach into the soil. These chemicals pollute water sources and harm aquatic life. Number 5 dry compact soil. So in some cases, repeated or improper tilling can lead to soil compaction, reducing pore spaces in the soil. Compacted soil has lower water infiltration rates, making it harder for water to penetrate and be stored in the soil for plant use. Furthermore, exposing the soil through tilling can increase the surface area exposed to sunlight and air, promoting higher rates of evaporation. This results in quicker soil drying reducing the water available to crops. However, there have been some developments in recent years and farms have adopted solutions to combat some of these problems. Number one, efficient pumping technologies. So variable frequency drives can optimize pump operation by adjusting motor speed to match the required water flow, reducing energy waste. And solar powered pumps are another example of sustainable alternative, utilizing renewable energy for water extraction. Number two, precision irrigation systems. So technologies such as soil moisture sensors, weather data integration and automated irrigation controllers enable farmers to deliver the right amount of water to crops at the right time, minimizing over irrigation and associated energy expenditure. A specific example of major farm development is in India where agriculture is a major consumer of electricity, so the government has initiated programs to promote solar-powered irrigation pumps. These pumps use solar energy to power water extraction, reducing the burden on the grid and providing a sustainable and cost-effective alternative for farmers. Sounds good? Okay, there is some progress here, but let's dive into some pretty interesting permaculture strategies tackling all of the problems we've discussed and not only the energy consumption. So permaculture focuses on designing systems that work with nature and minimize external inputs. Most of all, permaculture emphasizes water efficient design, agroforestry, soil improvement and holistic planning. So strategies include rainwater collection, diverse planting for soil, water retention, key line design for optimal water distribution, tree integration to reduce evaporation, soil enhancement through mulching and composting, and strategic crop placement for efficient water use. And these principles collectively minimize the need for energy-intensive irrigation practices in agriculture. 
pretty interesting, right? Make sure to smash the like button if you found value and share this video with people who might be interested in this topic. Now, let's explore a case scenario, helping us to better understand permaculture ways of solving the water management challenges. Okay, imagine this. Farm A is located in a Mediterranean climate and has a semi-flat land, 500 mm of annual rainfall, wet winters and dry summers, and the challenge is the contamination of water runoff from a conventional agriculture farm, Farm X, situated above Farm A. And Farm A aims to address water scarcity without resorting to pumping groundwater. Here's a permaculture-inspired solution for you. Number one rainwater harvesting and storage. So we would implement a comprehensive rainwater harvesting system on farm A to capture and store rainwater during the wet winters. This can include the installation of swales to slow down water runoff, allowing it to infiltrate into the soil. Rainwater tanks and cisterns, as well as the shaded ponds, would be strategically placed across the landscape to store the harvested water for use during the dry summer months, reducing the need for groundwater reserves. Number two, contour key line design. So we would apply key line design principles to identify natural contours and slopes on the land. This helps to guide the flow of water across the landscape efficiently, reducing the need for artificial irrigation with help of the special tractor attachment called Yeoman's Plow or Wallace Soil Conditioner. So this encourages soil aeration at appropriate times of the year and allow the water to penetrate the soil along the key lines, promoting better root development and overall plant health. Doing so allows rainfall to spread more evenly throughout the property, resulting in less runoff, more drought tolerance, less soil compaction, and improved soil fertility. Number three, water conserving polycultures. So we would design polyculture systems that include a variety of drought tolerant and water efficient crops, and integrating nitrogen fixing plants and deep rooted perennials will enhance soil fertility and structure requiring less external water inputs. Additionally, companion planting and gilds can create microclimates that further conserve moisture. Number four, constructed wetlands. So we would develop constructed wetlands or biofiltration areas strategically placed along the contour lines and these wetlands can act as natural filters capturing and treating water runoff from farm x and native plants with bioaccumulative properties can be selected to help break down and absorb contaminants transforming the runoff into cleaner water number five buffer zones and windbreaks so we would establish buffer zones and windbreaks with native vegetation along the boundaries of farm A. And these plantings can act as protective barrier, reducing the water evaporation from the soil. The vegetation can also serve as a habitat for beneficial insects and microorganisms that contribute to ecological balance. Number six, soil building techniques. So we would implement soil building techniques such as mulching, cover cropping, and organic matter um, incorporation. This is because healthy soils with increased organic content have better water retention capacity, reducing overall demand for irrigation. This approach also promotes soil microbial activity, which can add in the breakdown of certain contaminants. Number seven, holistic planning. So we would also employ zone and sector planning to organize the layout of a site based on the frequency of human use and external influences. So by strategically placing water demanding crops closer to water sources and designing for natural water flow, we would minimize the need of, for energy intensive irrigation practices. So, by integrating these permaculture principles and strategies, Farm A can reduce its dependence on external water sources, mitigate the impact of contaminated runoff, and create a more sustainable and resilient farming system within the constraints 
of a Mediterranean climate. So, what's the conclusion? As you can see, permaculture farming practices offer a more sustainable and environmentally friendly approach to water management. If you're interested in this topic, watch this video to learn about conventional orchards and permaculture food forests. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below and leave the like if you found value.